طيب اوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so this is the uh, the first chapter in the book the slides of course is provided uh, uh, by the uh, author uh, as part of the uh, book uh, uh, materials but i have actually modified the slides uh, significantly uh, part of it of course is this to update some sometimes the slides to you know to address some recent issues because the the book is a little bit old so keep in mind that uh, you know you are supposed to um, follow the slides uh, and of course refer to the book um, as far as i understand the book is available online um, but uh, <clears throat> the main source is the slides and the recordings that we have and of course if you uh, if you need to refer to the book you can do that um, but anything in the slides that's not even in the book, you are expected to, to know it. Okay, so it's it, it will be included in the in the exam. All right. So the first thing that we uh, that we always have to uh, to talk about whenever we talk about any topic, why why this topic? Why wireless communication is actually uh, important? Okay. So this is the main motivation. Uh, that drives us to study uh, any topic, okay? So wireless communications, wireless in general, touches every aspect of our life. We cannot, I, I don't think anyone can, can live without wireless. Uh, so all of us, we have, يعني, mashallah, you know, five to ten devices that we uh, walk around uh, with these devices, and all of them are wireless. So wireless constitute the largest network on earth, um, the number of wireless devices that exist now um, topples even the population uh, of the entire Earth. So if we have 8 billion uh, people on Earth, so we have at least 16 billion, <laughs> if not more, uh, wireless devices. Uh, the, the, the main reason for this is that wireless provides um, you know, two uh, fundamental uh, features, portability and mobility. Okay. So these important features allows anyone to utilize these wireless uh, devices and you know have ubiquitous act, uh, access ubiquitous access which means that you can have access to any service from any location at any point of time. So that's that can only be uh, provided uh, through wireless communication. Uh, it cannot be you know uh, you know uh, available through any other technologies without wireless communication. So you cannot really get around wireless communication whenever you want to have or acquire any service. Even cloud computing. So you have to, you have, to have wireless device if we want to have access to the cloud on the go. OK? Uh, so that's why we have uh, the uh, largest number of subscribers uh, you know, in, in wireless uh, networks, in different wireless networks, as I said. The growth has been exponential in the last two decades, at least. The growth has been exponential uh, until uh, a point where we have actually toppled even the population or maybe doubled the population on Earth. Uh, mobile applications, of course, they dominate uh, the Internet uh, usage. So uh, again, this is because of the uh, portability and mobility. So if you have devices that are uh, small form factor and very lightweight. You can move with these devices anywhere, and you can you can have access to you know uh, 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 um, varieties of uh, services, um, you know, y using these devices at any point of time. But of course, with all the new possibilities, always comes new threats. Um, so wireless, of course, uh, you know, as uh, uh, as good and as um, diverse uh, wireless technologies are, they actually introduced, uh, you know, uh, security threats and privacy issues. And of course, we've covered that in network security course last semester. Uh, so wh whoever has taken that uh, course, there is a significant component in that course that covers wireless security. And again, because of the fact that, because of this portability and because of this uh, mobility, there is always new types of threats okay, that have introduced because of the nature of wireless. One particular nature is that wireless provides, you know, wireless 
relies on some electro, uh, electro wave, uh, electromagnetic waves that travel through the air, right? So by nature, this uh, electromagnetic waves, they, brought, they are broadcast in the air, which means that they can be listened to by anyone. Anyone can listen to these electromagnetic waves, and they can extract information from it. So you cannot hide it. Uh, this is unlike wired networks, where you know the signal goes guided into a wire. All right. So there is some kind of a protection inherent in these types of a, of uh, communication. And usually, wired uh, uh, networks they provide point-to-point -point communication. In wireless, you can almost never have this. Almost never. Unless we talk about uh, microwave links, point-to-point -point microwave links, this is a very, very specific scenario in wireless or wireless optical networks where you have a beam of, uh, of signal uh, that goes from one point to another. Uh, but other than this, wireless in nature talks about the fact that there is electromagnetic waves, they travel through the air, so they are shared in nature. Okay? So... Um, that introduces many, many challenges, not just security, by the way, but uh, also uh, channel fading uh, and attenuation uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. So all of these are you know, big, big challenges. Um, so, but actually, the advantage overweighs all these challenges. So the challenges are, you know, uh, are there, but there are some techniques and some solutions for most of these challenges, and that's what we need to study in this course. Not just, of course, the, not the security part. Of course, we don't cover security part as part of this course. But here, we need to talk about the channel fading, channel coding, and how we can do some error uh, recovery for this wireless signal and all of these uh, issues. That's what we need to cover. Okay? So, so that's why these wireless technologies, and yani when they have done, we talked about this uh, as part of the network security. When, when they have... Uh, come up with the first, the very, very first standards of A2.2.11. They have never thought the adoption of this would be, would grow exponentially like this. In a matter of months and years, um, it's like what we see in ChatGPT now. So the, the number of people who have adopted this have, you know, grown exponentially in unexpected way. So that's why they decided to standardize or they come up with the standard uh, really fast because they never have expected uh, you know, the, the, the number of adopted uh, devices or the number of uh, manufacturers who adopt uh, these wireless uh, technologies to be that fast. Um, so very, you know, in few years, uh, it spread all over the world and everybody on Earth, uh, you know, they have now access to different wireless technologies. Um, one of the challenges of wireless technologies is that there is no one-size-fits-all. So, um, like, for, for wired network, you will see that the number of standards uh, or protocols, they are somewhat um, limited in terms of number. Okay? But in wireless, yani we see that... Have, have you asked yourself, why do we have all these standards in wireless? Yani we start with... Bluetooth, Bluetooth, low energy, ZigBee, and all of this is just for ad hoc, uh, short range communication. But we also have Wi Fi technologies, we have cellular technologies, and in each of these categories, we have list of standards and list of technologies, right? So if, if we talk about wireless signals and electromagnetic wave that travels through the air, you know, through the air, why not have one? Uh, wireless standards. And the, the fact of the matter is that you cannot have this because based on the context, based on the context, you need to have different uh, uh, technologies and standards. Okay? You cannot have one size fits all. So if you need short range, you have specific characteristics for the wireless uh, frequency and the wireless and the channel coding and all of this that you need to adopt. So you don't have the freedom to have one channel coding technique or one frequency range and uh, 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 and one Mac layer, uh, you know, scheduling technique and stuff like that. That fits in all these contexts. You can never have this. So depending on the context, 
you need to have different technique in each layer. Although it's the same wireless signal, but uh, wireless uh, signal inherently in different frequencies, they have fundamental characteristics that are different from another frequency range. Are you following what I'm saying? So uh, wireless signal itself fundamentally differ from one frequency range to another, right? And we'll study this in the course. So based on that, the hardware should be different, software should be different. In every layer, the protocol should be different. Everything uh, becomes different. So that's, uh, that's another uh, challenge for, for the case of wireless. Type. So there are two aspects, as I said, very important aspects in wireless, and these are the, the main factors why wireless is very important and uh, you know, uh, very widely uh, spread all over the world. Uh, mobility and portability. Of course, there is a slight difference. When it comes to mobility, this means that to be able to move from one place to another and you know, have access to the service. When it comes to portability, this means that the device should be as small as possible to be able to carry it with you, know, with you from one place uh, to another. So these are slightly different from each other. And sometimes, you know, you have a heavy device that you can move from one place to another. Some heavy device has some mobility uh, 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 feature, but it doesn't necessarily have to uh, be uh, portable. You can move it from one place to another. And you, for in a factory, for you have some, uh, you know, very heavy equipment that needs to be mobile. They are very heavy. That need, they need to be mobile. But they are not necessarily portable. They are not you know, to be carried from one place to another easily. They have to be يعني, مثلا, moved from one place to another. So, and there are the other way around. right? So you have uh, uh, devices that are fixed in the environment. They're still wireless. They are fixed in the environment. They are not, they are not supposed to be mobile. Like, for example, uh, sensors or cameras that are deployed in the street, right? So you're not supposed to move that from one place to another. They are not designed for this. This, yani, they, they, both of them, they are wireless. They use wireless. But that doesn't mean that you know, any, any uh, mobile device has to be portable or any portable device has to be moved. What the fark? So that's why you have the four combinations. So if it's not wireless or not mobile, this is like a stationary computer, like a workstation. Um, so some notebooks are not mobile, so I, I'm supposed to move them from one place to another, but whenever you move them, you have to hook them to the wall. Okay? They are portable, but you have to, they, they don't have wireless uh, 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 capability, so you have to hook them in the wall every time. Or the other way around, they could be wireless and, uh, uh, and not mobile. As I said, like fixed cameras that are deployed in the street. They are wireless, but you know, they are not supposed to move. So depending on the functionality and, 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 and things like that, you, you have the different combinations. Of course, most of the devices that we have, you know, that we use nowadays, they have both mobility and, and, and wireless capability. OK? Um, so the, the demand for wireless communication creates the need for integration of wireless networks into existing uh, fixed networks. So, uh, uh, so before we had you know, fixed networks, of course, uh, in the past, we had fixed networks, and it was wired. Uh, but uh, the introduction of wireless came first using Wi-Fi access points. Okay? And uh, the main uh, you know, objective <clears throat> or the main philosophy behind wireless access points was, in fact, data. So the main objective or the main motivation was to use it for data. Because we have already some telephone lines that we use for voice. And in the past, you know, uh, uh, technologies were not very sophisticated. So uh, each network you build, you build with a specific, very specific objective. So in the past, we used to have uh, telephone lines for voice calls, and we used to have wire networks or Wi-Fi for data. We never, we never had the, the, the perception that Wi-Fi is used for voice calls huh? or uh, voice networks are to be used for data. But this is the, the, the paradigm of 
uh, wireless conversions that we started to have about two, two decades ago that people on the cellular side, which they have designed the network mainly for voice, they started to introduce some data services. And that's why nowadays we enjoy um, all the triple play and video over, and, and it's the same cellular network, which originally was designed not for data, it was designed for voice calls. So the idea is that, you know, uh, we had the telephone lines, the wired telephone lines, which they use switches and so on, okay? So why not have, you know, uh, phone calls on the go? That's, that's the only, so that's what the, the perception of the first generation wireless was only to provide like some walkie-talkie or something like this to provide the people to communicate on the go. But there was no perception about uh, data services as part of this. But in a later stage, <clears throat> as we can see nowadays, we started to have conversions. Wi-Fi is used currently for voice over IP, and also wireless communication, they have introduced some data services. Okay? And nowadays, we have both are going hand in hand. Okay? واضح كده؟ الدنيا دخلت في بعضها يعني. العربي. Okay. Um, so, so on one hand, we have, as I said, we have LANs, we have wireless LANs. So the set of standards for wireless LANs uh, starting from uh, 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 802.11b uh, first, and then uh, uh, G, and then A, and then AC, and then currently we have there is uh, standards of AX that is actually under development now, which they call it Wi-Fi 7, okay? Uh, they, they have uh, even started to have like some generation for Wi-Fi similar to uh, 5G and 6G. So we have uh, Wi-Fi 6, and currently we have Wi-Fi 6, which is 802.11 uh, uh, AC, okay? And these, <coughs> they have data rates of more than giga, one gigabits per second, possibly few gigabits per second, which is, yani, of course, they are, you know, uh, reaching the level of wired, of wired networks even. Not fiber optics, of course, but yani, uh, they, have, they are reaching to very, very fast data rates. Okay? Um, on the other side, we have also the mobile uh, 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 or cellular uh, communication, cellular communication started with uh, f uh, f first generation. First generation was analog. Of course, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm throwing terms that we have to talk about in details later. So if, if you are overwhelmed with the terms or uh, 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 the, the discussion, don't worry. We'll get to this, and it will become clearer later, Yan. So we'll talk about the details of uh, first Gs, uh, the generation two or uh, second G. Uh, second, second G, of course, focuses on GSM, Global System for Mobile. So we'll talk about this. So until second G, there was no discussion about data. Aslan Khalas didn't cover any kind of data services. So we started to have data in 2.5G. Okay, of course, nowadays we have 5G. Alhamdulillah, it's widely spread. Uh, but of course, five, 5G, by the way, is not fully deployed. So there are many aspects in 5G that are not deployed currently. So if you hear that, we have 5G, we have 5G, but it's not fully 5G until now. And we started to talk about 6G now. Some people even, they, in research, they talk about 7G. <laughs> yeah, they are trying to be. So everybody is talking about 6G, let's talk about 7G. <laughs> so they are trying to jump ahead. But anyway, so we'll, we'll get to it one, one step at a time. Uh, so until now, we're just talking about some motivation, some you know, introduction. You know. So hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll appreciate the importance of wireless communication and why it's important, Yan. Because we cannot live without it, basically, Yan. Uh, of course, again, about more than a decade ago, we started to have the paradigm of Internet of Things. And when we, when we talk about Internet of Things, that includes everything, okay? Yani, I'm, I'm just trying to identify what is not IoT. It, it pretty much includes everything. So all our devices that we have, uh, they access uh, services ubiquitously. Um, so even our uh, headphones or... Uh, so currently we have... Uh, uh, 
few years ago, it was just a concept, but nowadays we already have some fabrics that are uh, that have some devices embedded into it. Uh, some football players now they have some embedded devices in their clothes that you know measures their vital signs and. They have some smart services even that analyzes using edge computing and, and so on and so forth. Uh, it analyzes all their vital signs while they are playing a game. Uh, so so that's, that's the IoT. Uh, all, even cameras in the street that uh, monitors cars and stuff like that, that's IoT. So, um, so IoT includes everything. It's Internet of Things. So... Uh, <clears throat> So before that, we had Internet of Computers or an Internet of Laptops. But when you talk about things, that includes pretty much everything, okay? So even, uh, you know, fridges at home, microwaves, smart home. So when we talk about smart home, everything in, in the house, all the appliances, they are things. They have, everything is IP-based, basically. Everything will become IP-based. So all devices, all appliances, all clothing, everything is going to be IP based, okay? And it's going to have wireless uh, uh, or some, some technology for communication because we, in Internet of Things, we assume that most of the applications, they talk about real-time information being transferred, okay? Um, okay, so the, this is the paradigm of Internet of uh, Things. So uh, even even this type of, uh, of pictures where you have uh, patients, uh, uh, you know, hospitalized and they have to be tied into beds. Inter IoT doesn't talk about that. IoT gives the technologies and the tools and the, uh, uh, and the techniques for patients to, you know, to live their own lives. And everything in their life is monitored. Of course, again, with that comes some threats. But forget about threats. We're talking about the potential or the frontiers that this kind of technology is open for patients. They don't have to be tied into beds. They can just walk around, live their own lives. And whenever they have, uh, you know, even 10 minutes before they have seizure, even sometimes 10 minutes before they have seizure, they alarm them. So there is an event coming, so you need to be prepared. So you can use it for even seizure prediction or some uh, uh, prediction for some kind of disorders. Or it measures your tension and tells you, you know, your hypertension is getting very high. You need to rest. You need to, uh, you know, you need to have some place and have a rest for some time before you can move on to your work. Um, so, uh, so, you, you, so this actually allowed, or Internet of Things in general, allowed wireless communication to be embedded in all aspects of our life seamlessly, okay? One of the biggest advantages of wireless is the easy deployment, okay? So when you deploy cameras uh, uh, in the street, okay, uh, you don't have to dig wires, you know, across bridges and across posts and stuff like that until you reach to these cameras. No, you can just take this camera, hook it on, on, uh, on the street, and using wireless, they use wireless communication to give you real-time information, so you don't have to really worry about digging wires here or there to, to build your network. So this is, the, this is what we talk about, easy deployment. So as I said, all appliances, all devices, they are going to be IP-based. Not just that. IP-based uh, and some computational capability that allows this device to be smart. Okay? So even the fridge, it's, it tells you that, okay, so uh, uh, this particular item in the fridge have reached to a certain temperature. Okay, so now it's fresh. No, something like that. Any, any, any kind of, uh, uh, of uh, you know, uh, event that, that's of interest to uh, people who are using these technologies. Okay? Uh, so talking about some application paradigms that are, you know, uh, very common and people talk about it uh, particularly in wireless communication field. Uh, the first thing is vehicular communication. And in vehicular communication uh, is, is one of the uh, networks that's uh, complex. And uh, uh, it, it was introduced probably about a decade ago. And um, uh, it has uh, varieties of services that it provides, uh, starting from uh, transmission of alerts and news 
in real time. So it can, you can be alerted in your car that you know, there is a traffic jam after two uh, kilometers or, and you need to be aware of this. Uh, road conditions, weather, things like that. So uh, uh, infotainment, uh, or of course, they use it even for, uh, you know, uh, to avoid accidents and, and things like that. So uh, there are certain cars now that, uh, you know, alerts you if you get close to another car or it tells you that this traffic jam that you have, maybe it's 10 minutes away and, and so on and so forth. So in order for this to become valid, you need to have two paradigms of communication, actually, which we call it, which we call it V2X and V2V. Um, you don't have to know the details of this. So V2, V2X talks about the fact that you have, uh, the, you have communication that goes on from the vehicle to the infrastructure. So you have a roadside uh, post or your roadside communication unit that kind of collects information from the vehicles while they are passing by and it aggregates this and it sends it to a command and control center or something like this. So this is V2X. So vehicle to infrastructure, and vehicle to infrastructure usually, usually uses certain type of, a, of uh, 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 mobile communication or cellular communication. But there is also ad hoc communication from, from one vehicle to another. So you don't have to engage the infrastructure in that case. Okay, you know the difference between the two. So there is a vehicle to infrastructure, usually use mobile communication, and vehicle to vehicle use ad hoc communication. Use different type of, of, of standards in that case. Okay, similar to our devices. So our, our, our cell phones, they use, of course, 5G uh, to communicate through the infrastructure, right? But we can use Wi-Fi direct or Bluetooth to have ad hoc communication. We don't have to engage the infrastructure. واضح النقطة دي ولا؟ اوكي. So we use ad hoc communication to provide vehicle to vehicle communication and this allows you to have uh, to avoid accidents, to have uh, a guidance system, things like that, right? So there is some uh, communication that happens between the vehicles themselves. Uh, طبعا vehicle data can be transmitted in advance. So for example, if you have ambulance, uh, at the ambulance before they reach the hospital or uh, the place of the treatment for the patient, they can actually send information maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes uh, uh, in real time to the hospital. And this means that the uh, uh, personnel at the hospital will prepare everything for the patient when they come in. Then uh, everything is ready for the patient to uh, receive the treatment. Okay. So that's... Uh, this is the, the architecture of the uh, vehicle, uh, vehicular uh, communication or uh, vehicle applications. Uh, so as I said, we have some communication that happens between the vehicle and the infrastructure through satellite communication, through U uh, UMTS. UMTS here, we talk about 3G. We'll cover this as part of the course. Or GSM or any kind of infrastructure uh, based communication. When we talk about infrastructure, this means that we have an access point or a base station tower or something like this that involves that is that is involved in the communication. So even if I want to send any information to you through infrastructure, then the signal has to be transmitted first to the to the to the base station and then from the base station to the other person. Okay. And of course, there is also a ad hoc communication, uh, and this is this is a totally different standard. And we'll talk about why we have. We have different standards for ad hoc communication versus infrastructure-based communication. Another application which is uh, which, which started to have uh, uh, you know a big emphasis in, in the last uh, decade as well, which is uh, remote monitoring and diagnosis. Of course, it's uh, it's actually growing uh, you know quite a bit. Uh, we talked about this more than 12 years ago, and we we have been saying that this is coming, this is coming, and people have not you know, uh, taking it seriously, but now it's becoming يعني, um, very widely spread. Uh, so we started to see people now are being monitored. They have uh, even some devices embedded inside them so uh, they can monitor and give you uh, real-time information on the go, uh, and they give you some useful alerts. This actually, this, uh, 
This figure is from previous work that we have done around 12 years ago. <coughs> Um, so we have actually developed that uh, that prototype uh, mm -hmm. uh, about a 12, 12 years ago for Hamad Medical uh, HMC, Hamad Medical Corporation. So um, we can use the brain computer interface to uh, try to send some brain information. Of course, one of the things is that when it comes to brain signal, it has you know, information about everything in your body. So when you monitor brain, that means that you can monitor any aspect of your you know, body activities, um, even your emotions, even your cognitive uh, activities. So that gives you a diverse set of information that you can use to monitor certain aspects and provide useful alerts and, and so on and so forth. And, and also the example that I talked about regarding seizure is actually detected using these types of, of devices. So this is a wireless device that sends information in real time uh, to, the, to your phone. Okay. And your phone, of course, from here to here, you have some, uh, some kind of a technology like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi Direct, okay? Uh, and, uh, and then your mobile, not only it's used to relay the information to the infrastructure, but also it's used to, a, to have like some smart techniques that can detect things on the go. So I don't have to send things to the cloud and wait for a minute or two until I get the results. So I can actually, you know, process things in the on device, this is what we call a edge computing, and uh, and uh, alert the patient. Uh, you know, give some useful uh, alerts to uh, uh, for the patient to you know uh, to try to improve their healthy condition health conditions. So, one important aspect is the uh, uh, is the is the, actually the wireless handoff. This is one of the important aspect that facilitates the mobility, but it also, it's also one of the challenges that we'll talk about, significant part of the course we'll talk about this, we'll mention handoff, uh, technology handoff. Uh, again, wired, we didn't care about this because the device is fixed, it's not moving. But when it comes to mobility, you have the potential to move from your house to another house, to probably a car, to a, to a gas station, then to a train, then to a place of work, then from work to a plane, and so on and so forth. So while you are moving from one place to another, you are actually handing off from one technology to another. Sometimes you are doing handoff from uh, uh, one access point to another within the same uh, network. Like, for example, when you, when you move from one place to another inside the, the university. This means that you are doing handoff from one uh, Wi-Fi access point to another, right? So this is called handoff. But this handoff does not change the technology. The technology is still the same. But if you move from, uh, uh, from QU and you get outside to drive to your house, so automatically you hand off from Wi-Fi to, to 4G or to 5G, right? So that type of handoff, uh, uh, we call it inter-technology handoff. So there is intra-technology handoff, and there is inter-technology handoff. And of course, the two types of handoff are totally different. And we'll talk about the differences between these two. But again, this was introduced with wireless. We didn't have this before, right? So now when you, when you do a handoff from, uh, for within the same technology, you need to probably move some resources, and, but it's the same network, so it's easy. And usually, from to, to, to do handoff within the same technology, usually you don't have any disruption with the service. So in your network here, in, in, in QU, try to have a phone call maybe on WhatsApp or something and just move around the QU. Unless you get to a blind spot, that's a different uh, issue, but usually you don't have any disruption with the phone call, right? But if you try to get outside QU, very likely you will get some service disruption. Why? Because moving from one technology uh, to another usually involves, you know, serious uh, 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 handshaking and authentication and, and uh, you know, resource handoff and so on that, you know, causes some disruption. That takes time, okay, um, at least in the level of seconds. So that usually causes some disruption to the service, okay? Again, if you, don't, if you are not following this, as much, don't worry, we'll, we'll talk about handoff later yani, in, in more details. 
But again, this is one of the issues that have been introduced. So we talked about some issues like security issues, right? Uh, like handoff. Uh, uh, these kind of things have been introduced with wireless. And of course, wireless fading and all of these we didn't have before, right? So that creates the paradigm of smart. So uh, nowadays, uh, uh, they add smart to anything. Any, 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 anyone who wants to talk about any topic, they add smart and they and fill in the spaces. Smart whatever. So a smart campus, smart home, smart whatever. Yeah, smart TV, smart whatever. So <laughs> we are now in the paradigm of smart. This means that, uh, again, our TV did not have any... Uh, Processing capabilities and, and things like that. So it was not really it was not really smart. But now because they have some processing capability, okay, and you have some wireless. Most of the TVs now they have Wi-Fi uh, built into it. So the TV has become smart, which means that you can use uh, uh, the processing capabilities to provide like some useful computation on device that provides services that we didn't have before. One of them is what we talked about when it comes to health. Right, so our phones now can you know process things. Our this this these phones are now like quad core and sixteen core, and they have three four different wireless uh, technologies embedded into it. So it's a, it's a monster, really. So it can be used for processing very sophisticated, uh, yani, uh, techniques. So we have uh, machine learning uh, techniques, very sophisticated machine learning te techniques running on on our uh, phones now, right? يعني using edge computing بالضبط يعني. ف... ف as I said, I mean a patient who was like who suffers from seizure doesn't have to wait for the uh, for the information to go all the way to the uh, to the cloud in order to detect uh, the scenario uh, uh, or the condition of, uh, of seizure. أيوة خلاص خلاص. Okay. So yeah, so this is uh, the zapt. Yeah, yeah. Of course, with smart comes uh, sometimes yeah, uh, non-smart. Uh, smart doesn't mean that you are always uh, yeah, smart. Sometimes you, uh, uh, you run into the possibility of uh, taking decisions that are not as smart as you can think. Like uh, uh, false alarms when it comes to seizure. Some, uh, some guy has all the precautions, and then he has seizure, and he has no alert. There is a possibility that this would happen. Um, <clears throat> Location-based services, again, is one of the paradigms that existed with wireless. Because, again, with ubiquity, with mobility, now I can deliver services to you based on your location. So if I know that you are working in a, in a mall, I can send you some ads uh, for some items for uh, shops that are close to you. Okay, So this is very specific uh, and targeted. Uh, services based on the location. We didn't have we didn't have this uh, types of uh, services before. Okay, um, so uh, the information can be push or pull. Uh, so push information. So if I know your location, I can push information to you, and at the same time, maybe uh, your device, using some smart techniques, yani, based on location, it knows it's like self-aware. So it knows that right now I'm in in this particular location. I can grab some information from uh, uh, this uh, shop or this type of, uh, 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 of server or something like this automatically, on the go. And it gives you this information. So push means that you know, information is pushed to you. You are not requesting it. Pull means that you need to uh, request this information and it, gets, and it gets received on your device. Um, also, there are some paradigms or some Issues that now can be uh, 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 used or can be leveraged that you know did not exist before. One of them is uh, caching, okay, uh, or uh, uh, computing or edge computing, as I said. So there is the concept of collaborative caching, or is there is a concept of collaborative computing. Caching talks about the fact that well, any any uh, device now or any wireless device has a cache, has some memory, right? So I can, I can have you know, uh, 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 a very huge file okay, pushed to 
uh, uh, to the caches of multiple devices. And these devices can use this collaborative caching to have a collective service. So part of this file is cached here, part of this file is cached here. I can use all these caches to integrate some useful information. And they can exchange the information in their caches based on certain protocol. So this is what we call collaborative caching. Uh, like, for example, the, uh, you can have a very big or large movie, right? Uh, the movie can be fetched from YouTube, okay? But if you fetch from YouTube, sometimes it takes time, right? So collaborative caching is usually used to uh, speed up the streaming or the fetch of, uh, of this video. So you can have multiple devices. Each of them, they can download the same file, but in different parts. And then we can exchange this using ad hoc communication whenever we need. So this collaborative caching, sometimes it enhances the performance of the collective group. Same concept goes to uh, what we call collaborative computing, or nowadays we call it fog computing. Have you heard about fog computing? F or G, right? Fog computing here talks about the fact that I can leverage the CPUs or the processing power of multiple devices to have a, a, a very sophisticated task being processed, okay? Uh, the alternative is to, again, uh, process this at the cloud, but instead, I can have a very sophisticated task and I can divide it into smaller parts. I can have this uh, 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 smaller tasks uh, done by small uh, device, which has like low processing capability, but using the crowd of these collective devices all together, I can have very sophisticated tasks being processed. Uh, one uh, clear example which happened to me in particular, <laughs> um, of course, behind my back, Yanni, uh, was to actually use my laptop for mining Bitcoin. It happened to, to and, and I noticed that, because I, I noticed that my laptop, the fan was like working like crazy, and the laptop is, is, is يعني, extremely hot. So every morning, I see the laptop is extremely hot. So I used certain tool to try to uh, investigate what's going on. So I found a process, and this process happened to be a torsion, which leverages this uh, concept of fog computing to do, uh, you know, uh, crowdsource for uh, mining for bitcoins. So it uses millions of laptops because mining bitcoin, as you as you all know, it's a very intensive process, right? But if I divide it into smaller tasks, I can leverage you know, one million laptops to, to do mining for Bitcoins for me, right? Uh, so this is what we call a uh, fog computing or uh, collaborative computing, right? So this is the concept of uh, collaborative caching or co collaborative uh, computing. So you will get to some of these techniques, by the way, in the seminar. You will see some of the papers, they talk about these issues. Uh, so privacy also is, is one of the issues, as we said, uh, because, you know, again, uh, wireless is inherently shared. Uh, even if you don't want it to be shared, it is shared uh, inherently because of the uh, basic nature of electromagnetic waves being uh, traveled in the air. So there is a chance that someone would read some private information uh, about you or about anything that you own, and that, that gets to uh, some uh, serious issues. Uh, <clears throat> when it comes to wireless, also uh, there is um, there is diversity both on the device level as well as on the uh, on the access point level. So, um, on the device level, we have wireless devices starting from nano robots, right? Uh, so we, we, we've heard about nano robots, which are like tiny little devices in uh, in the size of a, a sand, right? It's actually deployed in the person's body to to maybe uh, get some pictures or something like this from from any activity inside the body. Like a nano robot, yes, nano robot. Nanotechnology in general is like a, it's a, it's a field. It's a big field. So these devices are wireless, right? So we start from the scale of a nano robot all the way to uh, like a gaming laptop. A gaming laptop with some like some built-in GPUs and it's still wireless, right? 
but this gaming laptop is like uh, it's huge and it has uh, يعني, uh, enormous uh, processing power so this is diversity at the device level same thing when it comes to uh, 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 the the infrastructure so in the infrastructure as well we have uh, you know access points that you know this is this can work as an access point right and you have access point like this and you have big towers and right now we have the concept of uh, nano uh, base stations and micro base stations and and especially as part of 5G uh, so even the tower has certain scaling and we have right now like uh, I'm not sure if you have heard about HAPS high altitude uh, access points um, so uh, this is like uh, I don't know, balloons and these balloons are deployed um, you know in very very high altitudes these are permanently uh, deployed Starlink and these types of networks do use this so these are used as, as, as base stations to provide the wireless communication right so uh, diversity in wireless is like is <laughs> is unmatchable uh, so there is diversity at the device level as well as at the infrastructure level okay so there is some effects for when it comes to device portability so um, if the device is portable again uh, power consumption should should not be that high because again there is a form factor or a limitation on the size to be portable and that limits the capacity of the battery one of the يعني, limitations in in the development of technologies related to uh, not just wireless later is actually the development of uh, 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 battery technologies it's not as advanced as the other technology it's, it's going very slow and that always limits the um, the proliferation of some of the services of these devices for example any yani drones for for those of you who worked on drones we have heavy batteries but the drones can only fly for 15 minutes using these batteries which limits the functionality of these types of drones but we have to have small size drones okay um, and uh, and hence we need to have small size battery and that limits the flight time of these uh, of these types of uh, devices so we have limited uh, power uh, we need to have limited power consumption uh, and that limits uh, the services or the functionality of these types of devices loss of data so th again this is inherent in the f in the in the wireless uh, uh, characteristics because when we talk about wireless we have uh, fading right so this device is actually wireless so wireless signal it goes it hits all these obstacles right so we have the concept of multipath fading so the wireless goes into every every direction and um, <clears throat> when you receive the wireless signal on the other side you don't just receive one copy of this wireless signal you receive multiple copies that are reflected from the, all these uh, obstacles right so this multipath fading, in addition to the attenuation in each direction, which is variable, so uh, while a signal that goes into this direction, uh, it encounters certain type of attenuation. But if it goes like this, you can imagine that it gets more attenuated. If it goes like this, it gets more attenuated, and so on. So you have the concept of multipath fading and different copies, and that changes the fade. <laughs> it's very, very complex. So this multipath fading, uh, introduces uh, uh, serious sources of errors in the data and that's why here we have loss of data right of course we have many techniques to overcome uh, this loss of data of course we'll talk about error recovery techniques in, in in wireless so but there is high probability of of data loss in wireless that did not exist in uh, yani the probability of data loss in wired in wired communication is almost zero right and we never heard about error uh, يعني, correction مثلا, in wired communication in wired communication we never talk about error correction because the possibility of error is is يعني, is very very low but when you talk about wireless لا, the, the probability is, is pretty high so uh, we need to have error correction techniques um, so limited user interface again the, the small form factor limits مثلا, the size of the of the of the screen so that's why when we uh, get to a website or any application, we'll see that we have a mobile version and a desktop version, different versions. Why? 
because you have to optimize the user interface based on the size of the, of the screen to give useful information to the user. Otherwise, if you have the same interface, right, the user experience will be very bad, especially on, on, on mobile. But on mobile, they need to have, you know, a, a, a mobile application version where they optimize the size of the screen and they give you information that fits in this. And of course, limited uh, memory, of course, which limits also the, uh, uh, the size of information that you can fit in this memory. So, um, so flash memories now, yeah, uh, flash memories now, they, they get into the uh, terabytes level, uh, but when it comes to RAMs, um, RAMs of this mobile device, definitely it's not like a workstation or a, a laptop. So you need, we need to optimize the services also based on the limited size of this uh, memories, right? Yes. Okay, let me see. Uh, we can have a break now, or we can cover this slide and then go home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. La 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 no 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 la la. Um, um, so when it comes to uh, 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 so when it comes to comparison between the wireless and wired, as we said, uh, the high loss of data is due to interference. As we said, uh, multipath threading is one source. Another another source of uh, uh, of loss is actually interference. And when we talk about interference, this means that you have you know, wireless signal traveling through the air, but this is for one network, but you have a signal from uh, the network of, the, or the Wi-Fi network of the university that uses the same air of a signal from Uridu, from, uh, from Vodafone, and from Bluetooth, and all of these are actually sharing the air, mm -hmm. right? So how can we control this? So the only way for us to control this is to use that some EVA. How, how can we control this or uh, manage the interference? Frequency planning. Bravo Aleki. Filter, yes. We use ba a combination of all these things. So um, <clears throat> we have to use frequency planning to, to control this interference. But no matter what you do, there is always going to be interference, some level of interference. So we try our best to try to limit and minimize this interference, but it's, it's, it's already there, right? Uh, the worst case, and that always uh, goes out of control, is ad hoc communication. <laughs> so uh, any type of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi direct communication, right? Uh, this is not controlled because this is not centralized. If you go through the infrastructure, yes, th there is centralized control that can manage this <laughs> interference somehow. But uh, ad hoc communication, two people are communicating. How can you control this? And how many uh, communication of this is going on? You don't have any control how many of these are going on at the same time, right? So, so we have to live with interference, okay? And we have to be able to control the effect of interference, right? Again, this is uh, very uh, specific to wireless. We didn't have this before. Restrictive regulations of frequencies. Uh, frequency planning is one of the most complicated tasks that any telecom service provider does. It's very complicated because uh, regulations and frequency planning, it's actually, it's, it's controlled ultimately by the government, right? And any service provider like Uridu or Vodafone, if they come into the picture and try to have a network, they have to pay initially millions and millions of dollars to the government or to the country uh, in order to have access to a frequency range. Okay? Uh, these are what we call licensed bands. Licensed bands. So they have to buy a, a specific uh, frequency spectrum from the government and use this frequency spectrum. This means that this frequency spectrum is kind of exclusive to Uridu. Okay, so they cannot go to Vodafone and give them the same frequency range. Okay, so that's how you control. You have to, it has to be centralized. And this at least uh, 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 controls the interference between Vodafone network and Orido network. Myself. But again, that doesn't mean that you have interference-free communication. That's, that's very optimistic because 
You have many other technologies, Wi-Fi technologies, Bluetooth, ad hoc communication. So you have to live with some interference. طبعا Wi-Fi compared, sorry, compared to uh, 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 wired networks, Wi-Fi has inherently low transmission rates. Although with the with the advancements nowadays, it's getting very close. Uh, but uh, that has to have, يعني, that comes with a, a very serious cost. So we have, as we will see, very, very complicated modulation techniques, channel coding techniques, O of DMA, and, and very, very sophisticated techniques in physical layer uh, to be able to have these uh, high data rates. And of course, interference management, very sophisticated interference management, network management, and all of this in order to really increase uh, data rates. Uh, higher delays and higher jitters. Imagine if we talk about satellite communication, a signal or a single packet has to go all the way to the orbit and then come back to the ground. So you can imagine the amount of delay that this has to go through. Uh, lower security uh, and uh, uh, active attacks. Uh, I talked about many, many scenarios in the network uh, security course where people actually use uh, some tricks which is facilitated through wireless, like uh, stealing cars, if you remember. Uh, you can, can have you use some relay attacks to steal uh, cars um, by relaying the, the signal from the key, from the car key, to um, a long-range uh, device. And you can use that to actually steal the car and open the door and, and have access to the car. Again, this is facilitated through wireless technologies. We didn't have this, uh, these issues before. Okay, and of course, it's always shared. So, uh, as I said, even if, if whether you accept it or not, it's always shared. You cannot have private, although there is some limited scenarios now where we talk about microwave links. So, you have towers that uh, use wireless, but yeah, it's using some directive antennas that goes into a certain direction. So, so this uses, especially in millimeter wave nowadays, they, they use microwave links, but that does not exist in Qatar so far, as far as I know. So this, hmm? uh, actually, uh, yeah, in, uh, we have us, uh, in my work, we have side to side uh, VPN. لا, لا, VPN, لا, لا, VPN. Uh, side to side VPN through microwave. Ah, through microwave links. Okay, okay, okay. But this is to build a private network, or this is part of a reader network. Uh, no, no, not uh, part of. لا, لا, oh, but this is private. <laughs> this is private. I'm talking about, مثلا, when, when we talk about 5G, 5G includes millimeter wave, URL, C, and uh, machine type communicate. We'll talk about this. But the, but the network that we have here, as far as I know, يعني, does not have many of these aspects. يعني. It has like some high data rates, yes, of course. And the hardware, of course, is 5G compliant. But still, some, of, some factors in 5G are not really deployed. OK, so not fully يعني, uh, deployed 5G until now. OK? Yes. Stop here. So this started to talk about the history of. So now we finish the motivation or the introduction to uh, the fact that, you know, why wireless communication? So I hope that we answer this question. Now we can get to the history of this wireless communication technology starting from first G. So we talk about how the cellular communication standards uh, went hand in hand with the Wi-Fi and how the conversions happened using some uh, 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 chronological you know, dates and, and historical uh, events. Okay, so we'll talk about this next time, inshallah.